R E N E E S vineyard.com and don't forget to join us at the river. And when these Americans come home at night, bone tired, and turn on the news, all they see is the same partisan three ring circus here in Washington. They see leaders who can't seem to come together and do what it takes to make life just a little bit better for ordinary Americans. They're offended by that, and they should be. Welcome back here to the PM Show, Fred Dreyer edition. I'm Michael Horn, that's Fred Dreyer. I'm offended by this, and, and for this guy to continue this propaganda crap in the face of, of what we're going through in this country and not have one Republican de- uh, uh, rebut anything that this guy says, this is, the, this is the mistake that George Bush made, W, he made after eight years of this type of crap, these lies and propaganda going unanswered. This is an abject lie across the board. This guy hasn't any more reason to be president other than to come in here, and as I said before, I call him Muhammad Atta now, and that's what he is. He's a terrorist, and he's destroying the country, and he's getting away with it, and the Republicans are taking it. All right, President Barack Obama was on television, as was uh, uh, Republican House Speaker John Boehner. President Barack Obama, with his, uh, in case you missed it earlier this week, had this to say. For the last decade, we've spent more money than we take in. In the year 2000, the government had a budget surplus. But instead of using it to pay off our debt, the money was spent on trillions of dollars in new tax cuts, while two wars and an expensive prescription drug program were simply added to our nation's credit card. As a result, the deficit was on track to top $1 trillion the year I took office. To make matters worse, the recession meant that there was less money coming in, and it required us to spend even more on tax cuts for middle-class families to spur the economy, on unemployment insurance, on aid to states so we could prevent more teachers and firefighters and police officers from being laid off. These emergency steps also added to the deficit. Now, every family knows a little credit card debt is manageable. But if we stay on the current path, our growing debt could cost us jobs and do serious damage to the economy. What do you think of that? All you got to do is resign. That's all you got to do to fix the problems, Mr. President. Quit. Just simply quit. Because this guy, in the face of what is truthful, is the is the across the center line left of politics of Karl Rove and the compassionate conservatism of George Bush? Yes, they spent not even anywhere close to what this jackass is doing. This guy is burying this country, and again, here is a soundbite that the Republicans have yet to talk about. They're giving the Democrats are giving a platform to the to the Republican candidates for presidency next year, and, and all they got to do is take note of this. He's going to sink himself with all these sound bites because all of them are, 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 are abject lies and propaganda. Part of the money that he took out was to bail out the automobile companies and to create jobs. Where are the jobs? No, he didn't create jobs. It wasn't meant to create jobs. It was meant to, to, to pay off bankers. It was meant to pay off the people that supported this candidacy. And it was also meant to fund the unions. The unions are the ones that had to stay afloat. Remember, if the, if, 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 if the car company crashes, the, union's the new people that come in to take over with have to renegotiate a deal. Would have been nice, wouldn't it? They have to renegotiate a deal, just yeah. like Toyota does. Yeah. You know, they have to uh, have to renegotiate a deal with the, with the union people, which is fine. Re- renegotiate with them. But it's not going to be the terms and conditions of, of the retirement package that you have now. I mean, it's unbelievable what's going on. I won't bore you with the details of every plan or proposal. Thank you. But basically, the debate has centered around two different approaches. The first approach says, let's live within our means by making serious, historic cuts in government spending. Let's cut domestic spending to the lowest level it's been since Dwight Eisenhower was president. We'll do it. Let's cut defense spending at the Pentagon by hundreds of billions of dollars. Good. Let's cut out waste and fraud in healthcare programs like Medicare. I agree. And at the same time, let's make modest adjustments so that Medicare is still there for future generations. Okay. Finally, let's ask the wealthiest Americans and biggest corporations to give up some of their breaks in the tax code and special deductions. Go to hell. This balanced approach asks everyone to give a little 
without requiring anyone to sacrifice too much. It would reduce the deficit by around $4 trillion and put us on a path to pay down our debt. And the cuts wouldn't happen so abruptly that they'd be a drag on our economy or prevent us from helping small businesses and middle class families get back on their feet right now. This class warfare by this guy in this in this in this Democratic Party is unbelievable. The the uh, top four percent pay seventy percent of the taxes in this country, and, and and who do you think hires people? The people with money. Who do you think hires people? Corporations. You know, uh, if you want to do something for the country, get rid of NAFTA. Pull out of NAFTA and collapse that thing. Uh, and what they've done to corporations in this country is just unbelievable. And, uh, and, and, and all of this stuff, all this posturing that he's talking about is all propaganda. All of it are lies. None of it makes any sense. And none of it can, can hold up to the proper math. Two and two is not five. And that's what he's trying to tell people. The debate right now isn't about whether we need to make tough choices. Democrats and Republicans agree on the amount of deficit reduction we need. No, they don't. The debate is about how it should be done. Most Americans, regardless of political party, don't understand how we can ask a senior citizen to pay more for her Medicare before we ask a corporate jet owner or the oil companies to give up tax breaks that other companies don't get. How can we ask a student to pay more for college before we ask hedge fund managers to stop paying taxes at a lower rate than their secretaries? God. Now, if you're in California, yeah. uh, Governor Jerry Brown just signed in uh, where illegal immigrants, undocumented immigrants, can now apply and get a loans for their college. Uh, and they're undocumented. They are not citizens, but they can get loans and follow through. Even though they are illegally in this country, they can still get loans and follow through. Jerry Brown signed that into, into policy in California do, this week. How do you collapse a, a country? You do it economically through its language, through its borders. How do you how do you how do you do it uh, and, and perpetuate it into the future, but through education or indoctrination of of, of, its, of its youth? This is so clear. The the uh, the the boilerplate um, a, a business model that these people have for this country is directly aimed at collapsing the economy. How do you do it? You punish people with money. You punish people who make money. You take money and redistribute it. That's all this is based on. Tax the people with money, collapse the business, collapse the currency, uh, and, and give it to uh, union workers and blacks and uh, uh, illegal aliens and uh, the, the, the politic of the left and get them hooked on being union workers for the government so they pay dues. And uh, Are the unions needed anymore? Do we need the unions? I mean, is there a, Well, I think you should have unions. You should I, have I, unions. I think there should be unions, and, uh, and, uh, but it's, it's certainly not like it was in the 30s and the 40s and, and, and so on. Uh, so it's a you, new type of union. You should be able to unionize, uh, and you should be able to uh, uh, negotiate yourself a fair salary, but you shouldn't ask tax-paying citizens to pay for your retirement in, 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 in for, forever. Which is what's happening now. The, the, of uh, course. The retirement fees are getting so out of shape that nobody can afford to pay these it's anymore. It's grease all over so again. So they got to get taxpayer money to do it. It's a grease model that doesn't work in Greece, and, it, and they want to sell it here. All right, this is the uh, PM Show, Fred Dreyer edition. You can call 800-336-2225, 800-336-2225. Email Fred Dreyer at fdreyer at crni.net. When we come back, we'll hear from the Speaker of the House, John Boehner. He had a rebut. We've got some comments from that. Stay with us on CRN and the great Fred Dreyer. <laughs> 